Welcome back to another video. I've got a tripod in from KNF Concept to do a review on, and this is the TC2534. This is a carbon fiber model, one of their most popular tripods. So I was quite interested to have a look at this. Just showing you the bag that you get with this, quite a decent padded bag. You'll see you have the hooks there for the strap, which I'll show in a minute, and that gray strip is actually reflective as well. Pleased to see they have beefed up the zips on this. The ends of the zips are much thicker than the other tripods I've looked at. All the items are laid out here, but I'll go through it in detail in a moment. Here's a quick summary of the key features. The main takeaway from this is the weight is quite low. It's just over 1.5 kilograms. And we'll start by looking at the tripod. This is how it comes when you take it out of the case with the legs reversed up onto the head. The felt pouch that's on the top, that serves potentially two purposes. The first is obviously to give some protection to the head. The other use is if you want to fill it up with something, you can use it as a weight on the underside of the tripod, attach it to the hook. So I'll open it up and then I'll show it to you in its normal position. So most of the weight on this is just going to be from the head really because that's the main component which actually is metal. The adjusters on the legs with this tripod are very similar to the other ones I've looked at so you need to lift them up if you're pushing the leg up and they automatically clip back into place when you push the leg back down. So that means so you don't have to push them in when you've finished, it does it itself. There is a wrist strap included with this and that can also be removed if you want to take it off. One of the reasons for it being there is because it turns into a monopod and I'll cover that a bit later on how to convert that. I did notice that the rubber on this is a bit thicker and harder than some of the other rubber materials I've looked at. Just under the strap attachment area there's another harder rubber part so if you do push the head down it doesn't slam down straight onto the metal part. Like a lot of the tripods that I've looked at of this style and design and this is classed as a travel tripod because you can reverse the legs up on itself they're using the twist lock mechanism. You do have pointed ends on the rubber feet of each of the legs and in addition to that you can also unscrew them which means on uneven surface you can level it out and if you want to you can also take those off so there's potential to replace them if you can get spares. On the bottom of the centre column you'll see that there is a hook here and that is spring loaded. Now you can unscrew that and indeed you'll have to if you want to remove it to either use the short column which is included or turn it into a monopod. can be a little bit fiddly because there's a washer on the end of that screw thread. So what I suggest is just pull down with a little bit of pressure and it makes it a bit easier to take off. Moving on to the ball head, very similar to other ones I've looked at, the bottom knob controls the rotation of the head. So you can turn that around, you'll see that there is an arrow there with markings if you're using it as a panoramic head. The larger knob on the side, that controls the tension on the ball head. And what I found with these is they've got good machining on them rather than rubber. So there's nothing to potentially slip with these. And it's the same with the actual plate area where you have the tensioner on that. It does take a bit of tension to tighten it up, but once you have it locked in, it is actually pretty solid. I don't normally take too much attention to the quoted figures, but you should be able to fit a reasonable load on this. And certainly I haven't had any issues with it. With the Arca Swiss design on this, that means to say when you loosen it off, you have to fully loosen it and just pull it slightly to take it out. It does catch even when it's fully undone and that minimizes the chance of it coming off by accident. And that's what those notches on the side do. They prevent it from slipping around or falling off the head. The D-ring can be removed, but it's also nice that you don't have to use a coin. You can just use your fingers to do it. There is a slot there for a coin if you wanted to. When you're fitting the plate, what I tend to do is on this particular tripod is have the spirit level facing you because otherwise it will be obscured by the camera. Moving on to the other items included, this is the shoulder strap for the bag that also has a padded section. And this is a, just a very quick look at the user guide just to show you the setup, which I will show you myself. Allen key. Also have the short column, which is included and another bolt with a nut. What I'll do now is show you how to convert the tripod into a monopod. First stage is to remove the head so just uh, tighten up the tension at the bottom so it stops it rotating and then unscrew it. Take off the plate there with the bolt in it that's also metal just in case you're wondering seems to be fairly strong. You can interchange these bolts it really doesn't make any difference you just have two that provided one's pre-fitted. Now if you want to put the wrist strap back on once you've done this it's up to yourself 
unscrew the leg. Only one of the legs has padding and it's marked with the monopod. Then it's just a case of screwing in one of the ends into that leg. I roughly go around about half and half on this. It really doesn't matter too much as long as there's enough thread so that it's going to catch both sides. Take out the hook at the bottom of the center column and just slide that out. Then the next face is really just straightforward. Just screw the two in together. The nut in the middle is the tensioner for the two sides so that ensures that it gives you a nice tight fit. So give that a fairly good turn and it locks into place quite firmly. Here's a quick shot showing the monopod at its shortest length and I've also put the details on the screen right the way up to 175 centimeters fully extended so it's quite a decent sized monopod. You'll notice that with the center column you can't really go that low down because it does contact the surface and if you drop the legs down further that means to say that you'll have to raise the column up so what you need to do with this is just take the head off as we did before, make sure that the bolt is still in place and then you can attach the short column. That's significantly shorter than the main column. I measured it around about 94 millimeters. And what that means is once you've got that in place, you're able to drop the legs down much lower and get a lower angle on the tripod. The other option is to reverse the center column and then put the camera upside down on there and you'll be able to just adjust the height up and down as you require. I do know a few people that have kept a head on the short column. If you use macro low angle a lot, then that might be useful. It's pretty smooth in terms of panning. It's not really designed for video, but you could certainly pan stills, or if you're very careful, you might be able to get a decent pan on video. As far as overall stability, as with any tripod, I do recommend extending out the legs, particularly if you are in windy conditions. I've seen too many people have accidents with tripods where they've fallen over when wind has caught them. This seems to be perfectly stable as you'd expect from a decent quality tripod. And because it's Arca Swiss compatible, it means you can put your other plates on there and they just fit perfectly fine. I don't have too many areas to criticize this on, but the single bubble level, I would have liked if they could have included a few others, such as on the side here, on the knob, where they've just got a blanking plate that would have been easy for them to put one in there. And also the twist locks. Some people just don't like twist locks. I'm okay with them, but you do have to remember to fully lock it off and it does take longer than if you are using the lever locks. The lever locks are just much faster to unlock and lock. There are a few places where the finishing could be a little bit better. The paint job was okay. A couple of small imperfections. At this price, I don't really think there's gonna to be too many complaints. And I've used plenty of tripods like this myself. And I think they offer pretty good value for the asking price. Hopefully you found that video of some use. Do let me know what you think of this if you've got one or used one. And thanks for watching.